Welcome everyone to the uh, second of four memorial services in Bucks County today for the police memorial. Um, and today we'll be honoring uh, the two officers that were killed in the line of duty in Ben Salem Township, Officer Armstrong and Officer Yezzy. I do want to acknowledge some of the guests that are here today, uh, Jack and Carol Armstrong and Jackie, along with Josephine and Joseph uh, Kelleher for coming out and every year they continue to come out to honor the memory of their of their loved ones and our our brothers that were killed in the line of duty. I also want to thank the mayor, uh, Council President Polari and Councilman Knowles and Councilman Kisselback that are here and all the, all the other dignitaries, Judge Brown. Uh, I certainly appreciate everybody coming out today as well as a lot of the retired officers that are here. Uh, Kyle Shaluga, Jerry Weichel, uh, Bill Thompson, I know there was a Timmy Carroll, I saw a few others, so I, I certainly appreciate them coming out today to honor both uh, Officer Armstrong and Officer Yezzy. Without further ado, uh, Janice Albrecht will be doing the national anthem. Detail! Attention! Detail! Reason! Arm! Oh, say to now call up Matt, uh, Rabbi Moshe Shravitsky for the invocation. Mr. Mayor, Director Harron, members of the Armstrong and Yezzy families, our police officers, and honored guests. We all, share, we all share a sense of horror and anger at recent horrific kidnappings of hundreds of innocent schoolgirls in Nigeria. The terrible thought of parents sending off their daughters to school in the morning and now wondering if they'll ever see them again is truly heartbreaking. We all hope and pray for a miracle that will return these girls home to their parents and their families and will destroy the evil and fanatical monsters to advocate and perpetrate such horrific crimes. Here in Ben Salem, we don't face a daily terror war as people do in Nigeria. But let's face it, there's a new reality we do deal with. Terror and homegrown terror are a real and serious concern to each and every one of us. Beyond that, there's the safety in our daily lives, the ability to raise a family and live a life that's free of crime and violence that we all pray to we will pray for as part of the great gift of life in the United States that we enjoy. Our traditions have taught us the paramount importance of authority, of law and order, to ensure these values of life. It's to the officers of our police force that we owe a never-ending debt of gratitude for their sacrifice in maintaining this gift. These men and women who risk their lives on a daily basis to uphold justice and to maintain law and order now have to contend with an additional threat as they do their duty. We thank and recognize God's messengers, the brave men and women of the Ben Salem Police Force who stand before us today. It is to each and every one of you that we feel and owe a tremendous debt of gratitude and recognition. 
Today we remember Robert Yezzy and James Armstrong, those officers who made the ultimate sacrifice, officers who gave all they had to ensure that we could live our lives without the fear of tyranny and evil. May their memory be blessed. May the Yezzy and Armstrong families find strength in the knowledge that their lives went to help others, to bring good to a world where there is so much evil. Their lives were given not in vain, in the ultimate expression of care for others. May the light illuminate the darkness that surrounds us by forces of hate, oppression, and darkness. Let us close with a prayer. May God cherish the memory of those who have fallen in the line of duty. May he give strength to the loved ones to carry on with life. May he reward those who care for these most special families. May he protect the officers who risk their lives daily to make this world a safe and better place to live. And may he make them successful in their great work. May we soon see the day that the Almighty has promised will come. And Isaiah has predicted when all of humanity will unite and the earth will be full of the knowledge of God as the water that fills the sea. And let us say, Amen. It was October 24, 1791, that Cornelius Hodgeboom, a sheriff in Columbia County, New York, became the first American law enforcement officer that was killed in the line of duty. He was serving a warrant for eviction at that time. The inhabitants of a farm, and it was met by a hail of bullets and was killed. Since that day, over 20,000 law enforcement officers have made that ultimate sacrifice. In 2013, we saw the, numbers, the lowest of officers killed in line of duty since 1944, 107. But I have a feeling those numbers are going to increase, as we have already seen in 2014, over a 26 percent increase in the officers killed in line of duty from the year before in the first few months of 2014. But we experienced our own tragedy. On April 15, 1975, 28-year-old police officer James Armstrong, a five-year veteran of the police department, was the first Ben Salem police officer killed in the line of duty. He was shot and killed along Route 13 in Ben Salem Township by an individual who just committed an armed robbery in Bristol Township. And it was five years later, on August the 12th, 1980, that 29-year-old police officer Robert Yezzy, only three years on the job, was killed by a motor vehicle while conducting an investigation regarding a pedestrian. The pedestrian lunged at both Officer Yezzy and Officer Tony Ryle, who is here today and returned from his injuries back to duty. With a knife, the officers began evasive maneuvers, and the three were struck by the vehicle. Officer Yezzy succumbed to his injuries. Officer Ryle received extensive injuries, extensive injuries and did return to work. Police officers often find themselves in high-stress, volatile situations every day. At the other end of the spectrum, they deal with a lot of mundane, routine patrol issues. They deal with dishonest and dangerous people. Throughout each of those situations, they deal with corruption and lies from bad guys and see innocent people hurt in the process. It takes a strong person to deal with that all day, in and out, while keeping their traits that make them a good police officer. You hear a lot about police officers each day. Uh, a columnist just a few weeks ago, or a few days ago, J.D. Malone in the Bucks County Courier Times wrote, a, wrote an article that started off that you thought was going to be negative towards police and wound up being a very positive article regarding police officers' salaries and benefits. And then he ended each the article with what they have to face with every day. And I think of the, about that. I've been here now 27 years, and I could still close my eyes to this day, and there are certain things that I'll never forget. I'll never forget, in 1989, the DiGiorgio homicide, the first arriving police officer to witness a, a man chop up and kill his daughter, and I found the parts throughout, spread throughout the house. These are things you don't forget. These are things I will take to my grave. I remember on December 24th, a certain year, I don't remember the year, I remember the real tough guy that decided that he had enough of his wife, and he decided to assault her and then throw the Christmas tree and destroy all the presents while the two little kids looked through the banisters in the apartment complex, and that's, that's the vision I continue to see. These things stay with you each and every day, and it affects police officers. The average police officer lives, only, lives 15 years less than the average American. Most police officers die at the age of 57 years old, which kind of scares me since I just turned 50. It was just a few days ago that we lost a police officer, a retired officer in this county who is now working for the Attorney General's office, Robert Rossner, 
who is being buried today, a former police officer from Warwick, who was working as an agent for the Attorney General's office, was on his way home from work and was, struck in, was killed on that car crash on I-78 in Pennsylvania and is being buried today. Who would have thought that just going home from work? And that can happen to everyone, but the statistics are that, they live 50, that we live 15 years less than the average person. What are some of the things that kill police officers? Well, the four major things that kill police officers, obviously, that one would think would be felonious assaults. And then the other three you might not think. Accidents, as we just saw this past week with a, with a uh, attorney general's officer. Heart attacks. And then the fourth thing is suicides. I mention this because we need to take care of each other. We need to take care of ourselves, whether it's alcohol or drugs that are plaguing this country at incredible rates that we just seem not to get a handle on, and it's not of any fault of the police officers on the streets in Ben Salem. They're doing the very best they can working with our elected officials, but it's something that's plaguing this country, and it finds its way into our homes, and it finds its way into our families and into the police officers here. And these are things we need to look to one another when we get to work, during the day, when we leave work, make a phone call to an officer on a weekend that you know is having a tough time with some sort of issue, whether personal or at work, whether he or she saw something, like the officers that had to deal with that two-month-old that, uh, that they found dead just a f about two weeks ago that the mother rolled over on that particular child and the child had died. These are, l these are images that you don't forget, and these are images why police officers don't live as long as other people. Watch out for one another because sometimes no one else will. Sometimes you're all you've got besides your regular families. So keep that in mind when we leave here today. But there's also good things that happen. We're in a field that we get to do good things, and one of our own officers that I don't think it's widely known right now, Sergeant Andy Diazman, got recognized by the American Legion for the National Officer of the Year for the entire country. So the Ben Salem officers and the other officers in Bucks County are doing things throughout our community to help, whether on duty or off duty, that we do get national recognition, and Officer Sergeant Ansman, good job. And he takes that award not just for himself, but for all of Ben Salem Township, for all the police officers and the residents of our township. I told everybody I would be short this year. I Hopefully I did it. I just want to leave you with take care of each other. Sometimes that's all you got. Don't let someone leave that's upset, someone that's fighting with something inside. They're tough enough. They'll handle it. They're not that tough. They're not going to be able to handle it. The statistics don't lie. Take those statistics, remember them. I can still see from 19, 1989, I close my eyes, and I still see what I see. And that'll probably stay with me. Hopefully, I'll live past 57, but I'll take that for the rest of my life. For the Armstrong and Yezzy family, we appreciate the sacrifices that you made, not only to the township, to the Ben Salem police officers, and to all the officials here, but to the community. Your loved ones gave the ultimate sacrifice, and every day I get worried. I, I hope that never happens again. I hope 1980 was the last year for us. It certainly wasn't the last for Bucks County, and I hope, it, I hope that's it. I hope we have no more and we don't get to add any more names. With that, I'll just leave you with God bless you and God bless each other, and make sure that you take care of one another. Please don't forget that. Um, I'd now like to call Glenn, Vandebr Van Glenn Vandegrift, the president of the PBA. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Ben Salem Township Police Benevolent Association, I'm honored to be here on this bittersweet occasion to help celebrate the lives and the contributions of these dedicated law enforcement officers, James Armstrong and Robert Yezzy. At this time every year, we're reminded of how each of these officers were killed in the line of duty. These stories provide invaluable lessons for the officers of today that are standing here. Many years have passed since their deaths, but our memories of Jimmy and Bob cannot and will not fade. For we know that any time we could be called upon to make the, the ultimate sacrifices they did. Amid the quiet of this memorial, sound the echoes of lives lived honorably, duties served nobly, and sacrifices made knowingly and willingly. <clears throat> Behind each name is a story of service to others. <clears throat> of risk taken so that others might be safe, of rushing towards danger, not away from it. The families and loved ones of law enforcement officers know that each day brings unknown dangers. Your sacrifice is no less than the police officer that you love and support. 
And when this perilous job takes its ultimate toll, grieving husbands, wives, mothers, and fathers, continue on with each new day, mindful of the legacy and lasting memories their loved ones left behind. And today, the names on this memorial are another reminder of lives that ended and a task that does not end. We must never stop laboring in the work these officers started. As we hold vigil to their memory, we are taking over their watch, standing guard where they once did, and accepting the mantle of a proud tradition of selfless service. Jimmy and Bob's unique sense of commitment and devotion to duty is now ours. In their honor, we must continue to shape a future worthy of their great and noble sacrifice. Like all members of law enforcement, these men accepted the risks that come with serving as police officers, risks that our community asked of all police officers to undertake every single day in ways large and small. This memorial reminds us of how much we expect of our police officers every day and of the price that has sometimes been paid for the safety and security that we all too often take for granted. These men were not just police officers, they were fathers, sons, husbands and brothers, friends and neighbors. Today I wish that I could give you the families, friends and colleagues of these fallen heroes the peace that you seek, but I cannot. But I can make you a promise. The work they loved and the service that was the center of their lives will continue. Their sacrifice and your loss will be honored by a community has been and will continue to be strengthened by their example. Let me say to the officers here today, thank you for your service and for carrying forward the work of the fallen officers that we honor here today. The most fitting tribute that we can provide for them is making sure that their legacy continues today and in the future. Thank you and be safe out there. We will now have the laying of the wreaths, placing of the wreaths by members of the Armstrong and Yezzy family. by the Bucks County Chiefs, Chiefs of Police Association. I also wanted to acknowledge uh, Marion Robinson. We lost a retired uh, Captain Jack Robinson this year to a tra tragic accident. I know she is here today, too. Um, we have a, a tradition here in Ben Salem, the Policeman's Prayer by James Nolan. Good morning, everybody. As always, 
it really is heartwarming to see the same people come out to remember and honor our slain officers. It's important that we remember their sacrifice. The policeman's prayer, somebody killed a policeman today and a part of America died. A piece of our country he swore to protect will be buried with him at his side. The suspect who shot him will stand up in court with counsel demanding his rights but a young widowed mother must wait for her kids and spend many long lonely nights. The beat that he walked was a battlefield too, just as if he got off the war, though the flag of our nation once fly at half mast, to his name they will add a gold star. Yep, somebody killed a policeman today, in your town or mine, while we slept in comfort behind our locked doors, a cop put his life on the line. Now his ghost walks a beat on a dark city street, and he stands at each new rookie's side. He answered the call, of himself give his all, and a part of America died. My prayer this morning for you guys, that our Lord God will always protect you, guide you, and hold you safe in the palm of his hand, and thank you for your service. Father Michael Lonergan from St. Elizabeth Ann Seton for the benediction. And before offering the benediction, which is the final blessing, we'd be remiss if we didn't first thank our God for the many blessings he's already given to us. Especially the blessing of the fine men and women of our police, our police department here at Ben Salem, and for the professional associations that support them, the Police Benevolent Association and the Bucks County Chief, Chief Police Association. And so we grateful great for many other gifts, but too, too many to enumerate. But reminds us that the Psalm 34, that you all should taste the goodness of the Lord, and we have tasted it many ways. And so we now ask your special blessing to those who are here present for which we have had this gathering. First of all, we ask a special blessing on our police men and women. May they continue to be able to sharpen their skills so they can protect themselves as well as protect us. And also, may the Lord watch over and protect them in their service. We also ask a special blessing on the Armstrong family and the Yezzy family. Let them know that they are being here today is a show of our support for them. May they be comforted by God's promise that he particularly takes care of those who give their lives for others. We also have a special blessing on all those who support them in our police department and their daily duties. Our mayor, our, our, our public safety director, our members of our council, and most of all the, the general public who are so supportive of the men and women who serve them so well. And you know, We ask a special blessing too on those who are here at the service to to actually make the service a little better one. Or the, the Philadelphia Police and Fire of Pipe and Drum Corps and also the Ben Salem High School Choir. And so, Heavenly Father, we now ask that special blessing. Bless the men and women of our Ben Salem Township Police Department. Bless our mayor, bless our councilman, bless our public director. Most of all, bless and comfort the Yezzy and Armstrong families as they continue to, to grieve for the loss of the loved one. We ask these in all things in Jesus' name. In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Before we conclude, um, we have ref light refreshments, and don't forget, at 12 o'clock, there's a service at Middletown, and then tonight at 7 o'clock at uh, St. Andrews in Newtown Township. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Sergeant Reese. Newtown!